And uh, so, Greg, yeah, coming from Ontario and uh, from from the Den of Vipers that is Toronto, uh, as we were just chatting beforehand, and that's where I come from as well. So I, I share a lot of your, I guess, uh, experience <laughs> with, the, with the big city uh, and then coming out to northern rural Alberta. So uh, wh what's it like there now? It's been a couple of years since, I, since I've been back. I, uh, I've lived in Toronto for 11 years now. And before lockdowns started, I was like starting to get over it. You know, mm. I'd, I'd been there for seven or eight years. I was started, it was kind of starting to lose its appeal a little bit. One of those things where it's like, you know, cost of living, quality of life. There's always a lot of commuting going on. There's always a lot of like busy city bustling going on. Uh, and it's, and then the lockdowns happened. And part of, part of the appeal of Toronto is like the 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 cultural, the nightlife, you know, cultural events. And then obviously when all of that is shut down, it's like, why the hell am I living in this uh, concrete jungle? Uh, everyone's mm -hmm. wearing masks now and scurrying to and fro at the uh, grocery store. Thankfully, I wasn't like, you know, proper downtown, like right in the middle of the concrete jungle. But uh, yeah, it's gotten way worse. It's gotten so, <laughs> so, so much worse since then. You can look at the crime rates, the the amount of like daytime shootings that happen. You can just look on the subway and the, and the crazy stories from the subway. Um, the, you know, there's there's so many, not even outliers at this point, but like you know, especially grotesque <laughs> news stories. Like there was mm -hmm. one from like maybe a year and a half ago where it was like a group of like young female teenagers like stabbed a guy and they were like 14 and 15. Like there's just so many things where it's like, this is a bad omen. This is a mm. really bad sign for the city. And of course, how did this city of Toronto respond? They elect Olivia Chow and everyone's, you know, rubbing their nipples over the fact that Olivia Chow drove her bike to work to city hall. And it's like, this is, this is not the energy. This is the energy of a, you know, a, a Rome who's about to be uh, taken over bar by barbarians, right? Um, but that's on the kind of like the crime side. I I have I can go on a whole other autistic rant about the <laughs> roads and the oh, light lanes and how they're trying to make it as painful as possible for yeah. people who drive cars or truck drivers who have to move this, you know, Starbucks to and from the Starbucks locations. But of course. Um, yeah, I, I'm not going to go off on that rant because that's, you know, I'm, uh, my blood pressure is already rising and my doctor <laughs> recommends that, uh, I be, you know, be con conscious of that. So I remember in, uh, 2008, 2009, when I lived uh, in Waterdown, which is basically Hamilton, it's like 45 minutes outside of Toronto, mm -hmm. uh, you know, no trap, no traffic that is. And, uh, I drive to work and yeah, it would take about an hour to get to work. But then when I had a girlfriend at the time in the east end of Toronto, I'd be driving to downtown Toronto and that still took over an hour to get to work from her place. So mm -hmm. that's, you know, even back then before they started cramming more people in there, that was kind of what the traffic was like. Uh, absolutely unbearable. So I can't even imagine what it is now. Yeah. Uh, one thing is they're constantly building condos. So there's a lot of construction, mm -hmm. which takes things down to one lane. But I would say the epitome of terrible <laughs> leadership and just terrible decision making from city planners. They put bike lanes on University Avenue. If you know this University Avenue, it's actually one of the positives in terms of a city design. It's right downtown. It's a north-south street. And it's a big highway right in the middle of downtown. Mm. Great design choice. If you're a driver, you know how the convenience of University. They added bike lanes and <laughs> dedicated lanes to parking. There is multiple, I think it's three different hot it's just really stupid it's just really dumb and um that's just kind of a like a perfect example of like it's just undeniably terrible uh undeniably terrible decisions uh another one is like i live near young and eglinton and they're building like a, basically a choke point they're building this massive concrete like planter i guess for um for a tree but it's like you can't put a bike there can't put a pedestrian there can't put a car there and you just eliminated a, an entire lane of uh, valuable road space and you've created a choke point again and and you know uh, unofficially i think the rule is we're going to try to make this as painful as possible for people who drive uh very similar to how they're trying to make it as painful as possible in canada for people who are like entrepreneurs or like successful business people who actually make money here uh, trying to drive them out of the, the uh, country, it seems, with, uh, you know, with all their tax hikes and stuff.
Seems kind it's of been a, Yeah, it's been a few years since I've been back in Ontario. Um, what is, I mean, I, I guess, you know, you are where you are, but do you know kind of the general sense of what rent or what rent or, you know, well, if you're going to buy a house, what a house costs now on average or what an average rent would be for like a one or two bedroom apartment down there? I have no idea. I know it's bad. Um, you know, it's, it's bad, man. Trying to find a place too is like a full-time job in and of itself. Mm. And it's, it's almost like if you ever want to get a good place, you almost need to be like looking consistently, um, you know, putting in like an hour, at least a day for like at least two weeks. If you're in Toronto, like it, it took me over a month to find, um, find my last place. And I found it just when it was listed and I got in there right away. Like, you know, it was like one of those things where it was like, you have to be on it and jump on it right away or else you're going to be living in one of these like overpriced little condos that has a fridge about like the, the fridges in the condos are about this big. Like you can, you can fit like half a, um, half of a chicken from, uh, what's that place called again? I just, La Laws or whatever. No, no. I was going to say, um, Swiss chalet. Okay. Okay. Half a chicken from Swiss LA fits in these, in these, uh, condo, uh, fridges, but yeah, the city sucks. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't really know what else to say. Uh, <laughs> it's going on in the city right now. I haven't really seen much. Um, you know, I, maybe there's some crosswalks that I can like, you know, do a burnout on possibly. Um, Yeah. That's the other thing about Toronto. Uh, it's the big time festival city. So all the, especially during the summer, you have Pride Festival, you have your jazz festivals, and I'm a, I, I love jazz, so I'm not going to complain about that. But what I will say is, when they have these festivals, they shut down all of these streets. So yeah, you have construction, yeah, you have bike lanes, yeah, you have the congestion normally on top of that. But now you have like city blocks that are entirely shut down, and of course downtown Toronto, like you said, right downtown, they have one way streets everywhere. So it's just an absolute nightmare logistically to get around. The infrastructure is kind of crazy for such a big city. Yep. Yep. It's pretty wild. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm kind of, I'm, I'm pretty well over the city, uh, especially people work remotely now. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. It's uh, it's the city. I should probably check out some of these Palestine protests, though. I haven't been to those yet. <laughs> That'd be fun. <laughs>